tithes and offerings. Okay. There we go. Um, many ways you can give. You can give on our app um, through Google Play and the App Store. Or you can mail it in to P.O. Box 544, Dayton, 97114. Or you can put it in the little blue, faithful little blue mailbox back there. And our offering verse is Psalm 2514. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him. He teaches them his covenant. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity to be here tonight. We ask that you bless those that are here and those that can't be here. We ask that you bless this offering, multiply it, teach us how to use it. And Father, just guide us in our daily walk with you. And open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to what Pastor Bill has to say tonight. We pray this in the sweet and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we just ask that you would be with us tonight, God. We're asking for you to show yourself to us and that you would speak through Pastor Bill. We thank you, God, that you said where we are gathered in your name. Two or three of us, you are with us. We just give you this time ahead here to speak your word to us to let your message be known to the people, that our hearts and ears would be opened, and that we would walk away different than we were when we came in. We love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. How is a lack of fearing God affecting you? If we're afraid of God, we'll pull away. But if we fear God, we'll draw near. You say, John, that sounds counterintuitive. The reason it sounds counterintuitive is because the fear of God has nothing to do with being afraid of God. The fear of God is when we're actually terrified of being away from God. If you look at the men and women in scripture and in the history of the church, the ones who walk closely with Jesus are those who feared him. When we understand the awe of God, everything changes. Everything changes. So we're starting a new series, The Awe of God. Today we're going to be in Holy Awe, Part 1. When uh, going through all this, it's just like it, there was just way too much important information to go into this. So be patient. We're going to learn a lot. We're going to take our time so that we understand this. Did you know that fear of the Lord is mentioned in the Bible 200 times? Wow. And I counted them. I got to like 198, and I'm like, we need to pause here a little bit and move on. In Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So something to note here, that in Hebrew, the word for fool for in Proverbs is often used in the Old Testament. It means a person who is morally deficient. Hmm. Wow, let that sink in for a minute. So notes on fear. We're human, right? And we have fears. Might be fear of a roller coaster, might be fear of snakes, might be fear of something, right? But we fear because we're human. The awe and fear of God is deeper, more beautiful, and more intimate than we may dare imagine. The fear of God swallows up all these destructive fears. There's a difference. The fear of God is the beginning of everything good. In Psalms 25, 12, Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. So again, who's afraid? Not afraid. Who fears the Lord? In Isaiah 48, 17 through 19, This is what the Lord says. You remember the holy ones in Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your well-being like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would have been like the sand, your children like the numberless grains. Their name would be never blotted out nor destroyed from or before me. So, wow, fear. 
Hmm. So we're going to spend a lot of time on this the next couple of weeks talking about fear, the fear of God. And we're going to kind of di distinguish the two. It's not being afraid of God, but the fear of God. It's way too deep, way too big to cover all in one week. That's why I broke it out, this first one, in two weeks. We're going to build on it, so please be patient. Think about it's like drawing a picture, like if, you, if you're an artist or whatever, or even coloring, right? You have this outline. So we're drawing the outline now, so we learn about this, and we're going to start filling in the colors. And before you know it, you're going to go, ah, just like the awe of God, once we get it all together. So the fear of God is treasure. I'm going to ask a few questions during the sermon. These are things to ponder on to get you in the right mindset moving forward. Are you satisfied with your relationship with God? Think about that. Is there behavior in your life that you regret, that you do on a regular basis, that you regret later? Right? You don't have to answer those. Have you grieved over someone or of friends or family that may have walked away from God? Think about those. Learning the fear of God will help you with these issues. <clears throat> Our cultural is dead set on this no fear, right? I think they had t-shirts and all this printed up. No fear, right? In today's society, they, you see people doing crazy stuff like there's no fear, right? <clears throat> but we do. We do need to have fear. The only thing to fear is fear itself. Who said that? Oh, FDR. Close. Yeah, you were close. They're in the same time frame, I think. Yeah, that's all right. Close, but no fear. It's all good. But not all fear is healthy. Some fear protects us. Think about when you're cooking right? You know that the oven is hot, and you know if you don't put on mittens, it's going to burn you, right? So you go for the mittens, or the pot holders, whatever, right? Think about a, a mama bear and her cub, right? You're going through the forest, right? You know not to mess with the baby cub, because mama bear is probably going to attack you. So there's that sense of fear that helps us not to do silly things, stupid things. Yeah, I could say stupid in church, right? Yeah, because we sometimes are not, not wise. So here's another question to ponder. What do you fear most? Thinking about that, because we might fear of getting burned when we cook, do we not cook? If we fear of coming confronted with a mama bear when we go for a walk in the woods, do we not go for walks, right? So fear is kind of, you know, there's a balance there. Too much of it, right, will hold us back. Not enough, we're, we'll be nuts. We'll be stupid, like the Bible said there about unmoral, right? So evaluating that what fear is will bring great fruits. Think about that. Knowing where to kind of hold back, if you will, like doing with the oven, going on with the bears, etc., etc., etc. If you were told of a hidden venture that is a key to all life, do you think you would follow that? Hmm. It unlocks the purpose of our existence and attracts us to presence, protection, pro, uh, providence by your creator. It's the root of all noble character, the foundation of all happiness, provides and provides the needed adjustments in all circumstances that we may face. So there is a virtue here. Firmly embracing this virtue could lengthen your life, produce good health, ensure success, safety, and eliminate the lack and guarantee a noble legacy. Sound too good to be true? Hmm. 
It's true. It's true. Solomon speaks of it over and over again in the Old Testament. This prized virtue is none other than the fear of God. Solomon, unfortunately, didn't fully realize the value of godly fear, even though he was taught, even though he taught it and was inspired by the Holy Spirit, by the fear. Uh, just prior to his fall, godly fear wasn't present in Solomon's life. Right? He didn't no longer fear the Lord. He's like, I'm a wise man. I got all this stuff. I can do this, right? His fear went away, right? You got to think about that. So while he was stumbling, he was experiencing trouble and finally returned to God. So there, it's not like this is the end game here, that when we have fear or we lose our fear, that it's over. We can always return. We can always, always return to God. In Ecclesiastes 12, 13, Now all has heard. Here is a conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the duty of all mankind. It's our duty to fear and to follow his commandments. Embracing godly fear is our most prized treasure. Here we will experience true in intimacy with our God when we fear him. Not being afraid of him, but true in intimacy when we fear him. Holy fear keeps us connected to the wisdom of our creator. The only one who knows what enhances us and what undoes us. Think about that. So let's start discovering the fear the awe of God. Holy fear is God's treasure. And it should be ours. And Isaiah 11, 2 through 3. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. The prophet is talking about who? About Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. He, Jesus feared God. Think about that. And Isaiah 33, 6. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. That's a King James Version. Uh, the one's... We'll just say that it, the, King, the New King James describes it the best. So choose the value of holy fear and its life's greatest treasure, and you will be strengthened, strengthened and remain to the path of well-living. Now you may say, hey, Pastor Bill, but the fear does not come from God. right? We're taught that all the time, that we should not fear, that fear comes from Satan. But I just read you scriptures that said, to fear the Lord. There is a difference. There is a big difference. And we're going to study that. We're going to learn this. But there's a difference between the spirit of fear, being scared or afraid, and the fear of the Lord. If we look at a few more of these verses, even in the New Testament, it talks about fear of the Lord. We'll see and that we are instructed to fear, but it's not the bad kind of fear. We're going to learn this. In Philipp uh, Philippines, I always say that. Yes, that was in Philippi, right? Right next to the Philippines. Whew. In Philippians 2, 12, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There it is. There it is in the New Testament. In 2 Corinthians 7, 1, therefore having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness and the flesh of the Spirit, perfecting holiness and the fear of God. Hmm, there's that word again, fear of God. In Hebrews 12, 28, Therefore, since we are receiving the kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. 
A couple of big words in here that we're going to kind of digest here a little bit. In 1 Peter 1, 17 and 18, and if, and if you call on the Father who without practicality judges according to, the, to each one's work, conduct yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold for the aimless conduct received by tradition from our fathers, but with the, proceed, with the precious blood of Christ as the lamb without blemish and without spot. Here's one that really threw me. In Jude, in verse 22 through 23, be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others who show mercy, mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by their corrupt flesh. Only, or holy fear, is a New Testament truth. Don't be deceived when people tell you that fear does not come from God. Don't be deceived. In Exodus 20:20, 20, 20, Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that you fear God. And the fear of God will be with you, keeping you from sinning. Hmm. So the fear is going to help us. He said, do not be afraid. And he states that the fear of God will be with us and keep us from sinning. Hmm. Kind of like he's dwelling in us, right? Like he is here. However, uh, someone who is scared of God has something to hide. Think about this in the Old Testament, right? When Adam and Eve sinned, what did they do? They feared God, but they hid from God. Why? Because they were afraid. Right? They didn't fear him. They were afraid. Big difference. However, the person who fears God has nothing to hide. They are actually terrified of being away from God, being separated from God. That's the fear we're talking about, the separation. This is the first and only a partial definition of the fear of God. To be terrified of being away from God or being separated by him. Whew. Man, some crazy fear. The person who feels, fears God does not say to themselves, how can I get close to this line of sin without sinning? Right? How many bars can I go into without taking a drink? Right? Don't tempt. Don't tempt. Right? Because that, that's a sign of no fear. Look at me. Look what I can do. Right? We're taking it upon ourselves. Sin separates us from God. True fear and God, true fear of God causes us to run to him. Think about that. Holy fear is not being scared of God and running from him. It's running from sin to God. Hmm. True fear of God draws us to him. In Psalms 25, 14, this is our offering verse today, the Lord is a friend to those who fear him. You hear that in the Bible many times, that God is our friend, right? When we fear him, he teaches us his covenant. Hmm. I forgot that part up there. The reality is God wants to be close to us. He wants a relationship with us, right? And we should be fearful when we don't have that relationship, when we turn away from him. So that means that holy fear does not quench intimacy. It does the opposite. It enhances our interaction with God. Holy fear is a gift of love and protection from us, for us, from our Creator who deeply cares and longs for us. A good and wonderful fear of God draws us close to Him and lays a firm foundation that is vital to continue our walk with him. What is holy fear? 
you probably heard it, it's described as reverence, right? However, we should not limit holy fear only to reverence or reverent worship. It is different. There's more than that. Limiting the definition of fear to God to reverence is kind of like saying God's love is defined as kindness. It's kind of putting a limit on it, right? So it's not. God is more than just kind, right? There's many, many words, many, many definitions. All these short definitions fall short of the definition. Don't get caught up on reverence. In Hebrews 12, 28 through 29, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, by which he may serve acceptantly with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Notice the two terms here, reverence and godly fear. That shows us right away that godly fear is not limited to reverence only. Otherwise, just repeated himself by pulling the second term. <clears throat> no, these two different phrases in English are also completely different in the Greek words when this was written. And I'm going to mess these up. Adeos and Ula Bira. Yeah, I don't know. That's, yeah. Yes, you guys didn't know I speak Greek, did you? All right, so again, doing the research on this, these words, the first word, adios, is A-I-D-O-S, is translated to reverence. And if you look it up, it explains is that it's a profounding adoring or respect. That seems a little more than just our word reverence, right? Profound adoring and respect. The second term yeah, I'll mess it up again here. Ulaberia, that's E-U-L-A-B-E-I-A, -E translates to godly fear. It carries the meaning of awe and is defined as fear, dread, inspired by something great or terrific. How can you fear something that's great or terrific? Hmm. Again, that's another one of those questions to ponder. Don't be alarmed by these words dread and terror <clears throat> fear dread inspired by something great and terrific so don't be afraid of these words right because they they don't sound right right they kind of make us right well we're supposed to dread and we're supposed to fear don't don't and we're going to learn how remember that holy fear draws us to god it doesn't push us away so we have to ask ourselves, how can we see these words in a positive and healthy way when we're told about fear? Looking at the way fear of the Lord is defined throughout the Bible, we see that to fear God, to reverence, and to be in complete awe of Him. To hallow Him. Remember the how to pray. Hallowed be His name. So hallow him is defined as respect greatly. To esteem, to honor, to respect and adore him above all things, above anything else. When we fear God, we take on his heart. Think about that. Imago Dei, we're made in his image. When we fear him, we take on his heart. We love what he loves and we hate what he hates. Yes, God does hate. Not just dislike. Well, I don't really like what's going on here, right? If God hates it, we should hate it too. What is important to him becomes important to us, right? A lot of times we take on things ourselves and like, eh, that's okay, right? If it's important to God, it should be twice as important to us. What is not important to him becomes not important to us, Right? Think about that. To fear God is to depart from evil in every sense of both word and action. What we say, right? Is that the sign for say, right, Alice? Okay, thank you. All right, I was schooled on sign language earlier. So, so what we say and what we do. <clears throat> 
to depart from evil in every sense by both word and action, to refrain from speaking deceitfully. It is not untrue, and it keeps us out, it keeps our outward behavior in line with our inward thoughts. So again, if we're thinking about the good things, right, they become outward. So if we think about fearing God, right, it will become outward how we fear him. To fear God is to walk in humility before God and mankind, right? Because we need to be, stand up against this world. It's a bad place. We need to stand up, but walk with humility. To give him praise and adoration, thanksgiving and worship that he deserves. To give him all things that belong to him. To tremble before him in wonder and awe. To give his word and his presence our full attention. Not just on Saturday evenings here, right? Not just Sunday mornings, right? All the time, our undivided full attention. To fear God is to obey him. It is not just desire to obey him, but is to obey him. But an inward force determined to carry out his will will no matter to do his, determined to carry out his will no matter the cost. Right? Do what is morally right in the fear of God, no matter the cost. We need to eagerly, willingly, and immediately be obeying. Even if we don't see the benefit, and it doesn't make sense, because a lot of times we go, what does God really mean? What is he telling us to do here? I don't understand. Sometimes we have to just be obedient. Right? Check for understanding. But be obedient. The fear of God is to abstain from any form of complaining, murmuring, or grumbling. I need to work on that. To respect, honor, and to submit to his direct and delegated authority. To obey delegated authority, authority unless delegated authority tells us to sin. Think about that. Delegated authority. That means the power of God coming through somebody. We're to obey. Unless it's to be sinful. Man, think about that. The fear of the Lord shapes our intentions, our thoughts, our words, and our actions. We're starting to draw the outlines of this picture now. So you're starting to see, right, as if you think about a coloring book again, the outline. Right, so now we have this framework of what fear is and how we did uh, to understand it, the difference between fear and being afraid. So let's do a little bit more looking and at the benefits of fearing the Lord. The fear of the Lord, it is starting place for an intimate relationship with Him. We become His friends. We become we know His secrets. They become known to us, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. It gives foresight and clear divine direction. The fear of the Lord is how we mature in our salvation and how we are conformed to the image of God. Again, remember, we are created in this Imago day, right? And when we fear him, We become more like him. The fear of the Lord is clean and produces true holiness in everything we do. To abide in the fear of the Lord is to secure an eternal legacy. The fear of the Lord produces confidence, fearlessness, and security. Now again, there's that word fearlessness, not to be fearless, right? Right? Did that outline just get a little blurry? We'll define it here a little bit more. It swallows up all other fears, including the fear of man. So again, think about this. When you use your oven example, right? You know of that fear. You don't become fearless when you cook, right? But you do it with confidence. You know that, hey, that will burn me, right? And I have to do it. That's the fearless that we're talking about. Not fearless, 
but fearless. There's a difference. Dave's back there going. The fear of the Lord provides angelic assistance. It fulfills desires and enduring success and enduring excess. Nobility, influence, longevity, productive days, productive days, enjoyment in life, happiness, pleasure in labor, and healing for our body, and so much more. The fear of God does that for us. The fear of the Lord endures forever. It will never fade. The fear of the Lord is treasured, is a treasured gift by our Heavenly Father. The fear of God actually is the greatest force of confidence, comfort, and protection available by any being, any, anything in the universe, the fear of God. So when we, we think about this fear, again, not to be afraid. Not to be afraid of him. Not to be afraid of his righteousness. Not to be afraid of his discipline. Right? But the thing is, is that if we're separated from that, separated from our Father, that's the fear that he's talking about. Wow, I want to do everything in his name. I want to give him praise. I do not want to be separated from God.
sit down <laughs> that's stirring up the Holy Spirit in us when we praise him because he's an awesome God and he deserves our praise the fear of God is not being scared of him it is being terrified of being separated from him The fear, of God draw, the fear of God draws us to him. He does not push us away. Though we may think that, we may feel that at times, but he doesn't. The fear of God is more than just reverence. I was thinking about a story that, well, a part of my life, I didn't have the greatest childhood. My parents argued a lot. My dad was a drunkard. But I admired him. I remember young. I think it was probably five or six. And we were going out to eat. It was me and my sister, my mom, and my dad. I don't know where everybody else was. Mom and dad started to argue. They carried off into the restaurant and in the restaurant, it got so intense that we just left. We didn't order anything. We just left. Got to the car. There was more arguing. I didn't know what to do. But my dad got out and left and walked away. I was horrified. Dad, where are you going? Don't leave me. We should feel the same type of feeling when we walk away or we turn away. We do things that we know separates us from God. We should fear that. That we don't want him to ever, ever, ever leave us. But he doesn't leave us. We leave him. We are the ones that walk away. Don't be the one to walk away. I don't know where I'm at in my notes here, but I had to share. We're going to continue uh, the picture of the holy fear and the awe of God. There's a part two to this one here. 
Think about some of the questions I asked you today. Ponder on them. Right? And think about the true fear of God. Is not being afraid of Him. Right? He knows we're going to make mistakes. He knows we're going to sin. But He doesn't turn away from us. <clears throat> In Deuteronomy 10, 20, I think it is. You must fear the Lord your God and worship Him and cling to Him. David preached about this too. Oh, do not take the Holy Spirit from me. Oh, I can't imagine living without Him without living with our living without our God the Holy Spirit in us let's pray Heavenly Father we give thanks for you that you're an awesome God and you're a part of each and every one of us you dwell in us we surrender to you that you guide us to follow you to fear you and to never be separated from you. We cling to you. We give thanks for you sending our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to save us. Give thanks in his name, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> so if you hadn't guessed it or not, this, this has been a little emotional for me. <laughs> it's, it is. It's because we think we were taught that we should not fear. We think that fear is not of, law, of God, and it's not. There's a certain type of fear that is not. But there's the good fear. Right? And we, we know the good fear. If we don't, we should. You guys have a great week. Ponder on some of those questions and we'll conclude what fear is. God bless y'all. Have a great week.